Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky the Third. Last time, Kevin was given a mission by, um, Ayn, and he was told to go underneath Grand Cell Cathedral in order to find some sort of artifact. We don't really know what it is, but his mission is pretty much to fetch quest, go down there, and grab it. And, um, we've also met Tita's mother, who isn't exactly happy about this, considering, you know, she was the one who actually got the artifact. She was the one who actually, you know, brought it up from the bottom of Valeria Lake. So she doesn't really want to give it over to the church, and, you know, you really can't blame her there either. Oh, the primal ground. Yeah, why do you call it that? It's kind of odd. Oh. Huh. So there's other ones all around the world, like in Arteria, and then the other ones are just kind of based upon that one original one? Oh, yeah. Erica doesn't exactly like a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, we learned that last time. She has a long list of people that she hates. Oh. Well, there it is. Just go over there and grab it, Kevin. Like, easiest fetch quest ever. We didn't even have to go through an explore green cell or anything. Just kind of, you know, led us to here. Oh. Okay. Huh. Well, it looks like it's flashback time here. Oh, nice. It's really pretty. Huh, looks like they have a ship here and also an airship just kind of, um, docked on the water. Kind of like that show Tailspin. Did anybody ever watch that show? I guess it was like a spin-off of DuckTales, but not really. Oh, Gustav, hey, how are you doing? Yeah, we last met you, um, back in second chapter. You're kind of, um, a little nobody, but it's good to see you again. Oh, yeah, that's no good at all. Basically, all of Liberal surrounds Valeria Lake. It's divided up into five different provinces, and, um, the lake is kind of in the center of them, so they all, for the most part, border uh, Valeria Lake. Just a little geography lesson for y'all, in case you forgot. Oh, hey there. Kiddo? Um, that's not Tita, that's her mother. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, oh, yeah. Although, how old could she possibly- well, I don't know, Tita's probably like 12, so I would guesstimate she's roughly, I would say at the earliest, 32? Well, that sounds about right. I like her hair. I like the way that she just kind of has it, like, casually down upon her shoulder. It's really cute. I just, I, I actually, I just like Erica in general. I know that she's like a total hater, but I don't, I don't care. I like her. <laughs> she's a lot of spunk. Oh, Antoine! Yeah, we had a couple quests with him also. Huh. Good to see that uh, he's doing well. Oh, yeah. So we can add the church to the list of people that Erica hates. <laughs> So she hates Agate, she hates Kevin, she hates her grandfather, um, and she hates the entirety of the church. Got it, Erica. Got it. <laughs> They're gonna use this crane to pick it up? Okay, so they have the technical airships, but they don't have the technology to create some sort of submersible. Um, or like a diving suit of some sort, and go down there and just grab it. They're gonna use this crane? I don't know if that really works. Do they have, like, remote cameras or anything? Can they actually see it? Or are they using sonar or radar or something to find it? I kind of think that they're using some sort of radar. Um, I guess it would be sonar, because it's underwater, uh, in order to find it, because it did say that it was giving off some sort of, um, power, energy, or something. Oh, yeah. Well, you can't really solve their mysteries because the second that you get one, the church takes it. So I kind of see her point in so far as her hating the church and, you know, them confiscating everything because, like, how is science ever going to advance um, if every single time that um, they're able to find something that might shed some light onto the mysteries of their past or, um, you know, give some insight as to new or advanced technologies, the church just takes it and locks it away, then scientists can't actually advance their studies. So I totally get where she's coming from, but she's still a hater. 
And I still love her. <laughs> so did you guys get it? Hey, sweet score! We got it! Nice! Oh, wow, that thing is giving off a lot of energy. Holy crap! That's gotta be a septarian artifact. Well, we have to keep it safe from Ouroboros. So I kind of get why the church takes them, in order to keep them safe from the bad guys. But then again, like, how's Ouroboros going to get down here, underneath Liberal's capital, underneath this church in this... I don't know, hidden, sacred vault, I guess. Oh, okay, so the artifact lost its power, so because it doesn't have any power, the church doesn't have to take it. So I guess the scientists can keep it? Oh. Huh. I mean, just for safekeeping, you should probably give it to the church. Well, honestly, I would just give it to the people who could keep it the most safe. And in this case, that's Kevin. Yeah, the army's completely incompetent. Um, the scientists, they've been raided multiple times before. But the church, they seem rather stable. I mean, not the biggest fan myself, but, you know, they're able to keep things safe, so you might as well hand it over. Oh, yeah. You know... Why doesn't the church invite this, the, uh, the CCF in order to, like, research or study some of these artifacts? You know, then they might be able to advance their technologies and, you know, it'd be like a win-win situation. By the way, uh, the ZCF that they're talking about, that stands for the Zeiss Central Factory. Zeiss is another, um, town in Liberal, and it's where all the scientists and everything are. That's where Erica and Tita and all them are from. Um, just as a little refresher for those of you who either forgot or didn't play the first two games, and in that case, I don't know what the hell you're doing here, but hey, whatever. <laughs> That's neither here nor there, nor for me to judge. Hey, if you want to watch me, hey, go right ahead. And who are you? Oh, just some random nun. Um, why are you down here? How did you get in? Like, we went ahead and we created some magical door and everything, and then only then, using our magic, we were able to get in, and now some random-ass nun can come in just reading Bible verses, or the Book of Ezra, or whatever that thing was. Rice, huh? Is it Reese or Rice? It's probably Reese. I think it's Reese. I'm gonna go with Reese. But if I say Rice, I just do, and it's the end of my damn story. <laughs> I don't want to hear any pronunciation police out there. No grammar Nazis today. Not today, Satan. Oh. Wait, what? Huh? Are you a lesbian? Um, what are you talking about? Okay. Tita's the most powerful force in the universe? What? Huh? What? What? Are you, like, are you crazy? Okay, Erica is, like, officially a total whack job. <laughs> oh my god, like, seriously? You've got to be kidding me. Okay, so you're mid-30s, and a mother, and you're going on about how cute some random nun is? She could be Ouroboros for... Ori for for all you know, in here to steal the artifact from under your nose and kill all three of you. And you're going on and comparing her to, like, a teddy bear. Like, you've lost your damn mind, lady. Yeah. But who are you? Yeah, well, I know your name, but why are you here? What's going on? <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she, oh, what a bitch. She's like, you know, thanks for getting it for us. Thanks for dragging it up from the bottom of the deepest lake in the world. But, uh, bye, bitches, bye. It's mine now. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I kind of thought as much. 
Well, not really. We were just trying to be nice, but you know that in the end we were going to take it. Um, what legal basis? We're the church. Fuck you. We don't need legal basis. We just take whatever the hell we want to and we don't pay any taxes either. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. I'm getting way too political. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> Uh, yeah, pretty much, pretty much, um, have you been paying attention for the past 2,000 years of Western history? The church just takes what it, what it wants. It doesn't give a shit about anybody else. <laughs> okay, I really need to stop. I really need to stop. <laughs> um, what's the other side of the argument? I guess liberal could keep it safe. And Liberal did take it. Whoa! What the hell? What's going on here? What in the world was that? Oh. Wait. Oh. Huh. So I guess only, um, Kevin and Reese heard it. Oh! What in the world's going on here? So the artifact all of a sudden gained its power again? Oh, the outer thing was just a shell. So it's that cube that's the actual artifact. Well, you know what? I'll tell you what. Y'all can keep the shell. You can keep the little outer casing. And, uh, we'll take the cube. Sound like a fair trade? Sounds good to me. Yeah, and Kevin at this point's like, Fuck you, liberal. I'm taking the damn artifact and this is the end of my freaking story. Yeah. Huh. It almost looks like a battery of some sort. Like, what in the world? I don't know. But it seems rather important. I mean, we have like an hour-long scene just focused on this one frickin' artifact. Yeah. <laughs> Next episode is also a continuation of this scene, viewers. This is like the longest scene in JRPG history. But I'm actually kind of feeling a little bit better today. Um, I spent pretty much all... Well, actually, not just yesterday, but pretty much all weekend long in bed, either playing this game or watching Call of the Midwife on PBS. Because that's just how I roll. Yeah. <laughs> 1950s London East End? Poverty-stricken women giving birth? Sure, sign me up. I'll watch ten hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, anyway, I'm, I'm feeling better today. Um, I'm still really stuffed up, but I think I'm going to try to get a second episode out today. Probably more towards tonight. Um, we'll see, just depending on how I feel. I need to give my throat a break after doing this one. But anyway, we got our artifact. We got what we came for. So, oh, so these two have a history. Really? I guess they uh, were dating five years ago. Oh. Yeah, that's true. She is his subordinate. She is his squire. And he is the Fifth Dominion. <clears throat> yeah, what's going on? Wait, what was that? <laughs> I don't think so. That was rather loud, if I do say so myself. Hmm. Okay, so here we have yet another little... Really, girl? Really? Here we have another little anime trope, or JRPG trope, where the women are always incredibly hungry, always, like, eating chocolate or hamburgers or whatever it is that they're going to be eating, and men, they never really talk about food at all. Except in Wild Arms 5. Rebecca was just being a total bitch face in Wild Arms 5, though. It's like, if Dean wanted to eat, like, what the hell, just let him fucking eat! She had major, major issues in that game. But anyway, I digress. Um, what is it about JRPGs in general where... It, 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 is, is, is it really just me? Like, like, am I just imagining things where women are constantly eating, like, sweets and ice cream and chocolate and all this, and the men are like, oh, I'm never hungry. No, it's, I, I don't know what you're doing over there. But it's not like they're, like, harassing them for wanting to eat or anything, but it just seems like a really strange trope to me to always have women be incredibly hungry and men, like, just never discuss food at all. Happened in, the, happened in pretty much all the Wild Arms games, now that I really think about it. 
Um, I know for I can think of multiple scenes in Wild Arms One as well as Five. Um, I can think of a lot of scenes in Card Capture Sakura, a lot of stuff from Sailor Moon, this stuff right here. I know Estelle was always a pig in a <laughs> first and second chapter, but you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just imagining things. Who knows? Oh, did Kevin leave you? Oh, I kind of feel bad for her. Maybe she still loves him. I don't know. What makes her say that? Okay, well, at least she's not talking like a robot anymore. Like, th okay, there's another trope that drives me freaking crazy. Like Amy on Sailor Moon. Whenever she, like, starts talking like a robot, or she gets, like, really, like, way too technical and stuff like that. Um, I don't know what that's about, but it drives me insane. Yeah. Let's go get a midnight snack. Sounds good. All the bread. You know you shouldn't have carbs after 8 o'clock. In fact, w w whenever I'm hungry at night, I have cottage cheese. It's supposed to be um, probably like the best thing for you to have at night because it has casein and protein in it, which keeps you full for longer, and it also is slowly digested by your body, so it's able to feed your muscles all throughout, like, all, um, all night long, um, and it doesn't, you know, I don't know, contribute to weight gain or whatever. So, when in doubt, viewers, cottage cheese. Have it at night. It's a good thing. Thumbs up. <laughs> oh, I spend way too much time in the gym. <laughs> Haven't been able to go for about a week now, though. But, yeah, I'll be back soon enough. I am feeling better, so that's good. Yeah, it is kind of, um, odd, I've got to say. Oh, why? What's over at the port? Why don't you just eat at the restaurant? Like, you were just in there. It's still open. Oh, what's going on? Huh. Oh, somebody spying on us? A fiend? How do you guys know it's a fiend? Maybe it's a sixth sense or something. Yeah, or maybe it's just like a stray cat, or like some little street urchin or something. Oh, or maybe not. Okay. Time to kick some ass and take some names! Next time on Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky the Third. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.